Hello, it's Scott Manley here. It's been 10 years since the Space Shuttle delivered its last major component to the International Space Station. The Leonardo module was added in February of 2011. The Space Shuttle had been so critical to the construction of the International Space Station that its life was actually extended past the original 2010 retirement date that was set by George Bush. This was, of course, in the wake of the Columbia tragedy. But since the Space Shuttle retired, there's been only very limited additions to the Space Station. This year, however, we're going to see a series of significant changes to the structure with a number of new components that will enhance capabilities, keep the space station running and hopefully make life better for everyone that lives there. So I want to talk about the changes, the new hardware that is getting added in the coming year. So the biggest change is going to be on the Russian side of the station, where the long-promised Nauka laboratory module is finally scheduled for launch after years of delays. This will be a full-size module comparable to the Zarya and Zvezda modules. In fact, Nauka apparently began as a backup of Zarya, and after that was launched successfully, they began converting it into its current form. Now, originally the module was planned for launch in 2007, but there's been a few delays, including several major issues with the fuel and propulsion system, and that required a complete replacement of all that stuff. Uh, at this point, it has to actually launch before the end of the year because the warranty is going to expire on a number of systems. Now, it's also known as the Multipurpose Laboratory Module, or MLM. It's science-focused with research stations, but it also features things like crew quarters, propulsion systems, solar arrays. It also has the European robotic arm, developed by ESA, and uh, an experimental airlock which can be used for science. The module is currently scheduled for launch in July, but work has already been done on the station to prepare for its arrival. Now, the Nauka module is intended to dock in the location where the Piers module is currently located. That's a small module that sits on the bottom of the station and it's functioned as the Russian segment's primary airlock since uh, it was installed. It also has a docking port, which you can dock either Progress or Soyuz on it, but it's almost always Progress that's docked on there because since, since that's an airlock, airlock, you can't have people going on EVA when their escape spacecraft is docked to the other side of an airlock. So anyway, assuming everything works, when the Progress spacecraft that is docked there leaves the station, uh, it will bring the old module with it for disposal, and uh, where it will burn up in the upper atmosphere. And you know, this, this is sort of a big deal because this is one of the oldest modules on the space station. It's been there since September 2001, so it'll be almost 20 years old when it's disposed of. But this disposal will only happen once they confirm the successful launch of Nauka on a proton rocket and the module is checked out in orbit. And assuming, of course, that the Pierce module detaches cleanly after being docked for 20 years, because, you know, that you might have some problems with uh, hardware cold welding in space. <laughs> There's all sorts of unknowns in the, that's involved in this. But assuming all that works, then yes, the module will guide itself in autonomously, dock onto the station and deploy its solar panels and uh, radiators, and it will be a major expansion. Once that's docked, there's going to be a second module that's slated to follow on later. This is the Prechal module, which is a spherical hub with six hybrid docking ports around it. And this will increase the opportunities for future expansion of the Russian segment. Now, they have a planned module called the Science and Power module, which is currently being targeted for 2024. But given the delays that we've seen with Nauka, I'm not holding my breath. Suffice to say, those extra docking ports added by this module should last them for a very long time. Anyway, on the international side of the station, there's no single module that can compare to the 20 ton mass of Nauka. Uh, all of the components have to be shipped up in the trunk of the Dragon cargo spacecraft, so they're necessarily small. Although, I guess, you know, the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, that showed that with the right hardware, you can squeeze big things into small spaces. So the first new part is the Bishop Airlock, which actually arrived on a Dragon spacecraft just before Christmas. It was extracted and it's berthed, and it's finally opened, been opened by the crew in the last few days. 
So this airlock is a commercial scientific airlock that can be used to expose experiments to space. And it can also be used to launch CubeSats from the station. See, a big part of the science that's done on the space station is just exposing materials to the hard vacuum radiation temperature ranges of the vacuum of low Earth orbit. You know, to just to determine how they react and how they behave over long periods. And this is really important, of course, if you're developing future hardware for use in space. So the airlock was designed, built and operated by a company called NanoRacks. And it's the first major commercial component of the International Space Station. Although, you know, there's been some questions in the last few days as to the costs of using the station as a commercial entity, as apparently there's some language in the recently passed NASA budget which stops NASA subsidizing certain commercial operations. I hope that gets sorted out, but the airlock itself, it's attached to the tranquility module on the port side berthing adapter which makes it kind of low profile and hard to find unless you know where to look. It's sort of tucked in on the edge of the station next to the radiators. Um, however, the other major update on the international section this year will be easy to see. These are the new improved rollout solar arrays, or iROSA. There will be six new solar panels attached to the station. The original solar panels were shipped up to the space station attached to the truss segments with their uh, rotation gimbals and everything. Uh, these were inside the space shuttle, right? And with the much more limited capacity of the Dragon's trunk, they're not planning on adding entirely new solar tracking mounts and hardware for the panels. Instead, these are going to be mounted on top of the existing panels, in front of them, to take advantage of the existing tracking capabilities. That means that the new panels will cover some of the old legacy panels, but because of improvements in technology and the degradation of the panels that are already in space, it still works out to be a significant improvement to the station power generation. Like the technology in the new solar cells will get something like 30% conversion efficiency, while the existing panels after 20 years only get about 14% efficiency. So overall, it works out to be about 20 kilowatts extra per panel or 120 kilowatts when they're all installed. And while the station has room for eight, they're only using the six because this is a sort of minimum required to maintain existing operations. They have the option to extend at a later date. So there's been some EVAs to install struts and mounting points on the existing panel support structure. Once these are done, the panels will be sent up in future Cargo Dragon launches. And they'll be attached and then unrolled. So the design is different from the existing solar arrays that power the station. They, the support struts and the panels, they both roll flat into rolls. And uh, as they're unrolled, they sort of spring into a cylinder shape, you know, rolling into these cylinders and making them rigid enough to support the panels in space. The design was actually tested back in 2017. You know, they launched a dragon, pulled it out with a robot arm, rolled it out, and then watched how it behaved over a week while you know, subjecting it to vibration experiments. And that worked pretty well. However, at the end of the test, they found they couldn't roll them back up and lock them in place for uh return well for disposal on the dragon trunk so they instead just had to let the panels go in deployed form and because they were had such big surface area to mass ratio they actually deorbited in about eight months so from this point on each cargo dragon is going to carry a pair of these panels on a pallet in the trunk and they'll be installed. The canid arm will you know, pull in, pull out the pallet and store that in the station and then help astronauts on EVAs move these to the position where they fold out, unroll and uh, yeah, get the extra power. So as of right now, there's dragon flights scheduled for June, August and December. So yeah, the installation of these new panels should be finished by early 2022. So this year is going to be a big deal for the station with a lot of changes to the structure. Probably the biggest set of changes until, say, 2024, when, yes, we've got a, a module on the Russian side, potentially, but also on the international side, Axiom are intending to start launching the components for their commercial station extension, where they want to have three modules which can be sold to tourists or scientists that need to do stuff in space. I'm Scott Manley, 
fly safe. <laughs>